Welcome to the Braybon Metabyte Junior training video. This video explains the fundamental operations of the Braybon Metabyte Junior software. First we're going to discuss the toolbar icons. If you put your mouse over at one of the toolbar icons, it will actually give you a tooltip which will explain the function of that particular toolbar icon. First, let's discuss patient information. If you click on the patient information toolbar icon, it will show you the patient information dialog box. This dialog box contains the biographical information of the patient, including patient ID, code, last name, first name, social insurance or social security number, date of birth, height, in both imperial and metric measurements, weight in imperial and metric measurements. If you automatically enter in the imperial measurement, for example, it will automatically calculate the metric equivalent. You need to tab between the fields to make the change appear. Neck circumference in both inches and centimeters, waist, hip, in inches and centimeters. Waist to hip ratio is actually a better measure of obesity than BMI because it takes into account the location of the body fat. For example, if I enter in 40 inches and I hit the tab key or press the tab key, it automatically changes to 101 centimeters and the waist to hip ratio changes as well. Let's try that again. I'll change it back from 40 to 38 and the waist to hip ratio will change from 1.11 to 1.05. And BMI will be automatically calculated based on the height and weight that you enter. For example, right now it reads 27.5. If I change the weight from 224 pounds to 110 pounds, the BMI will also change from 27.5 to 13.5. Regarding BMI, anything between 25 and 30 is considered to be overweight, and 30 and higher is generally considered to be obese. During the Metabyte configuration or setup process, which is explained in a separate video, it asks you for patient last name, first name, weight, and ID. You can change any of that information in this field after the recording is completed. If you wish to enter referring physician or medications, you may enter them in these fields here. The next toolbar icon we'll be discussing is the histogram settings. This toolbar button simply toggles the histogram on and off. The histogram represents the entire recording. This thick black band corresponds to the strip chart display above it. So this left margin here corresponds to the beginning of this strip chart display. The right side of this thick black band corresponds to the right edge of the strip chart display. We know the width of the strip chart display because it's shown here. The display weighs at 300 seconds or 5 minutes. It's also shown here at the bottom of the screen. The next toolbar icon we will discuss is the event markers window. Click this button and the event markers window will appear. It shows you a list of event markers that are in the recording including lights out, lights on, and if the patient pressed the event button during the recording. To jump to one of these event markers in the recording, select the event marker and double left click on it. It will now jump immediately to that section of the data. For example, if I want to jump to the lights on or end of the recording, I double left click on that event marker and I jump immediately to that section of the data. I know where I am because here in this section of the display, it shows me the page number which is 1121. It's also shown here as 1,121 of a total of 1,131 pages. Each page is 30 seconds in duration, which is called an epoch in the sleep nomenclature. This indicates the end of the recording when the patient woke up and actually pressed the button. At the beginning of the recording, I would double left click, and again it jumps to page 261. You can close the event marker window by clicking on the X. The scale display icon simply fine tunes how the data is displayed on the screen. If I click that, 
you'll notice the chest channel just changed. It does not actually change the, the recording permanently, it just changes how it's displayed on the screen. The next toolbar icon we'll discuss is the Mark Bad Data toolbar icon. What this shows you here is a drop in SPO2 based on an arousal at the end of a respiratory event. The software will automatically mark bad data. But if you wish to change it, you can certainly edit it in much the same way you would edit any other event. Make sure you exit the mark bad data mode, otherwise you won't be able to enter events later. The delete scored events button would be used if you're dissatisfied with the automatic scoring and you wish to quickly erase a number of events. Press this button to enter the delete scored events mode. Left click on any event. With a single click you can remove events. This is the undo button. It replaces the events in the reverse order with which they were just deleted using the delete scored events button. And again make sure you exit the delete scored events mode by clicking on the button and you'll notice it no longer remains pressed in. The observation screen is where you would enter the scoring technologist's name and the physician's name to enter in observations. The Create Report toolbar icon is used when you are satisfied with the data and you wish to generate a report. Click on this toolbar icon, select the report, click Create. At this point you need to confirm that you have reviewed and verified the patient information and the scored results. If you click No, you will not be permitted to generate the report. If you wish to generate a new report, click Create New. If you wish to view an existing report, click View Existing. The software is now generating a new report and it will then launch Microsoft Word. This shows both pages of the report. In this instance we have patient surname, first name, ID, biographical information as shown before, the apnea and apnea index, and here's a legend and you see that anything less than 5 is considered normal, 5 to 15 is mild, 15 to 30 is moderate, and any AHI above 30 is considered severe. This patient has an apnea and apnea index of 35.7, therefore this person is severe. This shows you a quick explanation of the Metabyte Junior Recorder. Here you have any comments. If you notice, these were the comments that were entered earlier. This is a breakdown of the pulse oximetry table. Between 90 and 100%, it is also broken down in 2% increments, which gives you more sensitivity to look at the mild cases. Anything less than 50% is generally considered to be poor quality. Most pulse oximeters are not sufficiently capable of detecting blood oxygenation levels below 50% with reasonable accuracy. On page 2, to break down the respiratory events, central apneas, obstructive apneas, mixed apneas, hypopneas, total of apneas plus hypopneas, snoring events, desaturations. The events by body position table is important because it then allows you to look at any positional apnea which occurs. Beneath that you have a breakdown of the total night graphs of SpO2, pulse rate. Each tick here shows obstructive apnea, central apnea, mixed apnea, hypopnea, desaturations and snoring. Then the body position. Each tick mark here shows you an SpO2 dropout which would be automatically detected by the software and marked as bad SpO2. Usually those are only a fraction of a second in duration or perhaps one or two seconds. Page 3 shows a breakdown of biographical data and also has a few fields that you would have to select the results. For example, this patient has obstructive sleep apnea. That would be the, one of the reports that are available. Other reports are also available in the software. Once you are satisfied with the report, you may print it. That is one of the examples of just one report that's available in the software. 
The print toolbar icon allows you to print this page. The switch night toolbar icon allows you to switch between nights one and two if you recorded two consecutive nights using the Metabyte Junior. It simply toggles back and forth between night one and night two. The jump to epoch allows you to manually enter a page and jump to that section. The display width is a drop down field which actually allows you to select the display width you wish to look at. For example, if I wish to go to a 30 second display width, I can go up to as long as 6 minutes or as short as 5 seconds. For respiratory events, one will look at a display width between 90 seconds and 360 seconds. To navigate around the display screen, you may use the arrow keys on your keyboard. An arrow press to the right moves you ahead in time. An arrow key to the left moves you back in time. You may also use the page up and page down keys. An arrow press upwards, an upward arrow press, moves you half the display width back in time. And a down arrow press moves you half the display width forwards in time. You may also use the control page down key or the control page up key for the same operation. Alternatively, you may choose to use the mouse wheel or the wheel on your mouse to navigate around the screen, which is what I'm doing right now. You may change the events on the screen by right clicking. And for example, if I wanted to change this from a hip apnea indicated as HY to an obstructive apnea, I simply select obstructive apnea. I may change it back, right click. If you do a mouse over on the event, it will actually indicate the maximum voltage, the minimum, the range, and the length in second. For example, if I do a mouse over on this desaturation event, it indicates that the maximum arterial oxygen saturation is 98%, the minimum is 86, that's a 12% drop, and the length in time is 52.3 seconds. You may resize an event by left clicking on the border and moving it to the left or the right. If you wish to increase the display of one particular channel, hold the control key down and double left click on that particular signal. You'll notice the color changes. Now press the up arrow. I pressed it twice. Press the escape key and you'll notice that it looks larger in appearance. If I press the scale display button now, it will change again. Now that we've discussed the toolbar icons, let's discuss some of the drop down menu items. Under the file drop down menu, you have open which is what you would use to open up another patient file. Select the patient file, click open. You may choose to print from the file drop down menu. And this is the same as pressing the print toolbar icon. Print preview actually shows you the chart. You may zoom in. Under the tools pull down menu, you have file location setup. This is where you would set up your network, backup or archive locations. You may also write to a DVD from within the software for archiving your data. The assisted scoring settings allows you to customize some of the default software settings. However, you generally do not need to do this. The delete scoring events allows you to remove all of the computer generated scored results. The assisted scoring selection allows you to reanalyze the data using the computer automatic analysis. The computer is now reanalyzing all of the data and laying down events on the screen. The help pull down menu shows you the about screen which will tell you how much free hard drive space is on your computer as well as the version and build number of the software. And also under the help pull down menu is help topics you have the entire user guide PDF on your hard drive along with some user videos. We hope you found this Metabyte Junior instructional video helpful. If you have any questions, you may always call our toll-free line at 1-888-462-4841. Thank you.